Redditors who have been in prison, what's the most heartwarming thing you've seen or heard in prison? Not prison, but in jail for a while, and there was a book I was reading that the library man gave me, and come to find out the last like 40 pages were ripped out, this absolute gangster type dude heard me complaining, and he came over that evening and told me how he'd read that book before and knew how it ended, and he basically narrated the last 40 pages to me over the next two days, that's freaking awesome. I'd be so bummed and angry too. I wasn't in prison, but I went to Germany as an exchange student to a family where both parents worked in prisons. The dad worked in the infirmary and the mom was a guard. One day the mom, her nine-yo daughter and me were in the city, shopping, when she saw someone she recognized. It was a woman that you wouldn't look at twice, wearing regular clothing, talking on her phone. My exchange mother walked up to her from behind and flicked her ear. The woman screamed and then both started laughing and hugging, had a small conversation and then they parted. When I asked who that was, the mother said it was an inmate, not an ex-inmate, a person that was currently imprisoned. Seeing my shock she reassured me that she would soon take a bus to go back. Apparently people that are close to their release time get the chance to go out to get everything ready, like get an apartment, job interviews, that kind of thing. It kind of made me happy. I spent a week in a detention center waiting on a bail hearing. Every morning with breakfast we got a pack of instant coffee. Thing is, by the time we were let out of our cells I was already awake and didn't need coffee. So after three days of saving these coffee packets just to not use them I just walked out and was like who wants coffee? Pod boss, inmate who is unofficially in charge of the cell block. Someone you generally don't want to piss off, and his second in command are like sure will take him. Turns out these guys aren't all that scary. Second in command guy makes killer origami. I watched him make a fighter jet and a tank. He ended up giving me a paper crane. I didn't get to keep it unfortunately. It was in my cell when I went to court and was released. I did a couple years at a small fed spot. And my first week there I was approached by an inmate who ran an organization through the prison chapel. Their mission was to make sure new arrivals were stocked up on necessities, hygiene items, clean underclothes, etc. Duh. They told me it wasn't expected that I should ever pay them back. But if I'm ever in a position to donate back to their cause I could do so. A couple weeks later I got some money in and bought all the items they gave me. I found the gentleman and told him I wanted to donate. He was actually shocked, and even seemed a little touched. He didn't specifically say so but I got the impression that people rarely give back. This is just one of several stories I have from my time there about inmates being absolute brothers to each other. My friend says there are two cats that visit that everyone fawns over. One is tabby colored and one is solid black. I forgot their names, but he really enjoys seeing them. Oh, I just imagine a bunch of tough inmates going gaga over their little furry friends. Oh yeah, and my friend got jacked in prison. So very much these manly men loving on these kitties. He'll be out in hopefully less than 5 years but something that keeps him grounded is his workout routine. He is able to learn and volunteer as a firefighter and that really has helped him recover from the trauma of his situation and guilt. He loves that he's able to help people. When I was in juvenile prison there was a dude whose baby sister passed away from cancer. When he got the news he refused to go back to his cell cause he wanted to call his mother to check in on her. The cops weren't going to let that fly. This led to the cops threatening to lock down and rush the block just to get him so most of us ended up refusing to lock up in solidarity with him. It ended well though cause one of the counselors came in and talked him down and allowed him to call his mother. Though I think we got away with it cause this guy was a model inmate to the administration, but also had a good name amongst us inmates cause he was honest and treated people fairly, didn't steal, didn't talk shit to anyone, paid his debts, didn't try to game others, etc. I spent a year in prison and I'll be honest with you. You hear a lot of stories about crazy shit happening but most of prison is just pure boredom. No disturbing things, no heartwarming things, just existing with a bunch of other dudes trying to ride out the clock. Mix in some high school-esque drama with cliques and such and there you go. Basically prison in a nutshell. Each state has a handful of max security facilities where shit is probably pretty crazy on the daily. And not to mention third world country prisons. But bottom line is prison is not what you see on TV. Anyway, I have a couple stories where I felt or saw something remotely heartwarming. I guess. First is was during my first week. On the yard. I had a greasy tweaker looking dude come up to me and be like first time? I'm like a, only time, hopefully. He says well you look like you probably only have a year and a day, this is the minimum sentence to be sent to prison. And a lot of these guys aren't going home so it could be worse eh? I'm like I know, just stressed about home, blah blah. He gives me some advice about basically accepting that my GF is inevitably going to fuck someone else and leave me, spoiler, she did, and how none of them wait. It's better to just forget about home and do your time. He's like chin up, bud and walks away. I never even told the dude I had a GF. He just assumed which I thought was hilarious. In hindsight, I'd if you want to call that heartwarming, but I guess it was nice to have some mild words of encouragement from a hardened criminal to a stressed out 19 year old me that's never been locked up a day in his life. Also I witnessed one of the more respected corrections officers smuggle in tobacco. He saw me see him, 
Later in the day he called me down to the desk and he gave me this long talk about life, and how nobody has to be defined by their time their blah blah blah, and how he respects someone like myself that keeps his word. He must have somehow dug into my case and saw I didn't cooperate with law enforcement for a reduced slash suspended sentence and wanted to know I wasn't going to snitch on him, without flat out saying it, super nice guy either way NGL. And lastly, when I was a couple weeks shy of going home I almost got into a fight with this skinhead dude over a dumb misunderstanding, only altercation I ever had, and my cellmate interjected, took a rap for something he wasn't even involved in, and defused the whole thing, later on he tells me he wanted to make sure I go home on time, solid fucking dude. There was nothing that was going to stop me from going home though. I wasn't going to fight that piece of shit to prove some dumbass point. But things do get weird if someone is trying to fight you. You either gotta fight or snitch and I wasn't about to do either of those things. Side note, my Selly died not too long after he eventually got out. Won't ever forget that guy. R.I.P. Selly. This is not my story but my dad's when he was a guard. There was an inmate there who got cancer. And he was fighting for about 5 years. The whole prison, guards and inmates, Tried to make his life easier because he was told he was gonna die with cancer either way. His last night he wished to have a McDonald's cheeseburger he died before he could get it but the guards bought everyone who took care of him cheeseburgers. They all sat quietly eating the cheeseburger he wished for. Years ago there was a show that had younger inmates volunteering to care for older inmates who were sick or infirm and had reached the hospice stage. It was nice to see how gentle they were when taking care of their needs. I did a few nights in jail after getting into a fight. Ended up losing my job over it too. While I was in the cell with like 10 other guys, everyone was talking about why they were in. I was 19 years old. This like 40 to 50 year old black guy was in for grand theft. He'd been stealing cars and got caught. He goes to me man, you will be out of here soon. All you did was get in a fight. They probably won't even charge you with anything. I'm going back to prison. Don't be like me. It kinda stuck with me. I've never been back since. The face of a hopeless man scarred me for life. City court jail was in holding with a chick I had known from middle school. She was a popular girl, and that had scared nerdy me back then. In holding, she got me involved in the group conversation when I was previously just keeping to myself. Helped pass the time. Went to county for 10 days at 10%. Older lady was my celly when I finally got mostly booked. She claimed the bottom bunk BC she had epilepsy and told me how to get the guard's attention if she had a seizure. I was tired AF and at like 2 or 3 AM they called me to finish booking. But I didn't hear BC I was asleep. Celly woke me up nicely but firmly. And I got booking done. If she hadn't given a fuck to know my name and wake me up my release would have been delayed by at least several hours. Maybe even a day depending on the bureaucracy's small and unnecessary but kind acts. My ex was in for just shy of two years and would write me often. His buddies would write poems for him to send to me and add drawing to the letters for him. Ah, oh, that's really sweet. I have one. But mine is from juvenile detention. I was 16 F and had gotten arrested four times for underage drinking. Was raised around a lot of alcoholism and drug addiction. Anyways I was a part of a three-month substance abuse counseling program. The center I was at was small and normally we were separated by gender but because there were normally only three to four girls in the entire place compared to like 80 boys my substance abuse classes were co-ed with me being the only girl in the class with about 15 to 20 boys. Now, I was a white blonde girl from a middle class background and these were all boys from way worse circumstances. A lot of them had gun charges slash armed robbery charges and were already convicted felons at 14 to 17 years old. Anyway on my 16th birthday, I didn't mention it was my birthday or anything and the whole class of boys sang me happy birthday. I guess our counselor mentioned it. It was so unexpected and heartwarming I almost cried. I didn't have a whole lot in common with those guys and they generally teased me for being the rich white girl but that moment felt different. Being locked up as a kid on your birthday was hard but they all understood. Okay, I'll go because I shared a horror story in the other thread. I was in prison for a brief period in Dubai before being removed by my consulate. I was in minimum security. And most of the people there were in there for unpaid debts and petty crime. Most were broke. And a very large proportion came from developing nations in Southeast Asia and the MENA region. I'm not sure about the other wings in the prison, but certainly in my wing the head inmates ran a voluntary donation inmates who had access to cash or had family on the outside could make to help out the poorer ones. It helped remove the stigma of having to beg, and allowed people access primarily to phones, since there were no free calls. It also allowed basic hygiene because there was no soap, which let's be honest made it better for everyone. But also some people were in there so long their clothing would wear out, and we only had one set so even if you washed them you had nothing else to wear. You could borrow a set and retain some dignity while yours dried. We also had to buy blankets and pillows. The inmates would pitch in to help make sure that each other's stays were at least remotely bearable. Otherwise nothing was provided except two meals. Breakfast and dinner, your shirt and pants, and a, really horrid, mattress. Edit, also I can't believe I forgot about probably the most wholesome thing I saw in there, outside the wing, but behind the security doors was a hallway, 
which had a TV in it. The inmates would crowd around this 30 TV 20 deep to watch Bollywood when it was allowed. When it wasn't, the hallway was the access to the mess and to the exercise yard. It was tiled about 12 tiles wide, they set up a game of human chess on the tiles. 32 inmates all knew their piece and their position, some of the games lasted a few days if they got interrupted and had to disperse, but they always came back. I used to volunteer at a juvenile detention center in Chicago. One day my group was getting ready to do out regular thing when another group asked us to attend their event. Apparently they had been teaching a music composition class and it was performance day. Parents were supposed to come but not everyone had someone there for them. So my group of four got to support these kids as they showed off their new skill and celebrate with them. It was kind of sad, but also the most wholesome thing I experienced in there. Someone I know was arrested and in a holding cell. Well it was around chow time and one of the inmates was delivering food. Offered her a sandwich and said you can't have the full first time arrest experience without trying the food. She declined, but said it was the one thing that made her smile on that very weird day. When one of the gangs on my block slash pot of 100 people cooked for everyone with their own commissary on Christmas. People who didn't get commissary got two wraps apiece. Everyone else got one. They were GD but there were Bloods and Crips and other gangs there too. And it was Max Custody. They were walking around with with Rubbermaid tubs full of noodle wraps. They were tasty too. I would 100% buy slash make something like it out here. Along with some other jail recipes. I remember some dude drone delivered fresh toiletries into the prison. Good times. Not prison but the county jail. I'm a black person in Texas and you hear some shit down here. So I was expecting the worse. The reason I went in was over some completely dumb shit. And at first it was looking like I might stay a while. I got sent to the common area at night. Everyone was sleeping so I didn't have to worry about interactions much. I couldn't sleep though. Next morning we get woken up at 6, for breakfast, and everyone shuffling around to line up. I'm nervous this, but the girls are nice to me. I grab my food, sit down and they start chatting me up, and I relax a bit. A few hours pass and I start having a panic attack, and one lady comes up to me and starts comforting me and just talking to me. A few others come and tell me it's going to be okay. At one point we all pulled our commissary and had noodle burrito chili burritos, and a weird peppermint brownie they had made. It was oddly delicious Lolly helped a few girls take care of their hair. We shared books, stories of our lives, problems, why we were in there, food, sung. It was a really interesting experience. Most if not all of them were simply in there because of probation violation. I learned why it was hard for some of them to get their lives back together. Really opens your eyes to our shitty justice system and just people's lives. After two weeks though the charges were dropped and I was to go home. Everyone was happy for me and some gave me their contact info to keep in touch. I did for a while but unfortunately I couldn't keep up with my own issues at home but I'll never forget them. I used to work with a dude who spent a few years in prison. He once told me that the best form of therapy he's ever gotten was with this older prisoner who'd probably been in there just as long as he'd been alive. He joked that it wasn't a wise old man deal. More like a don't repeat my mistakes type thing. I spent about one month in prison for a DUI. I live in Norway. And while our prisons is nowhere near how you see American prisons depicted in movies, the threshold for getting incarcerated for drug slash alcohol related offenses and traffic is pretty low. That being said, it was a minimum security prison. In daytime you could just walk right out if you wanted to. There was cameras of course, and you would get caught if you tried to. The gates were closed at night though. Anyway, some people who lived nearby had a cat. And that cat visited the prison every day. We gave it snacks if we had. And it followed us inside and slept on the sofa in the TV room. The guards knew the cat was visiting us, but they let it stay as long as we treated it well which of course we did. A lady knitting baby booties for a pregnant lady. My dad was in prison for a few years when I was a kid. On Halloween the Walking Dead series premiered and he said that it wasn't TV time but the guards let them watch it as a treat for everyone missing their families. I guess the guard liked it or something because they got to watch it every Sunday from then on out. He would always tell us other stuff too like guards leaving a piece of pizza in the microwave for them to eat when they were on cleaning detail of the break rooms. When he was on work detail in the community one guard would buy them ice cream. My husband was in for two years and he said there were bunnies in the yard and the inmates would name them and some were friendly and would come up and like to be held. He said was weird seeing convicted killer and rapists just chilling w the bunnies. Everyone especially loved spring when the baby bunnies were born. Another one was when my husband's case was overturned they weren't letting him out right away for some reason and we couldn't get an attorney to help us. So one of the OGs said fuck that and filled a habeas corpus petition from prison w the federal court system and my husband was out in like a week. I got caught with half ounce of good quality weed at a music festival in Ireland. The trip to tip, held in Tipperary. The prison I got held it was packed and I ended up on top security wing. I had got a ferry over from England and fairly worried about how I would be treated by the locals, especially as the nickname of the town was Stab City. I was treated fine and on the second day I was asking about reading material and was told to visit the canal. An IRA prisoner on the top level as he lent books out. 
He had never left his cell in seven years as he considered himself a political prisoner. In those years he had never washed or changed his pillowcase. He had switched it inside out and back to front and it was full of holes in black. I was released after a week with a 300 pound fine and had my possessions ready to drop off. I told the guard I just had to drop off a book to the kennel first. I stuffed my virtually brand new pillowcase down my bollocks and swapped it for his raggedy old one. He was so genuinely happy to receive it. I will remember the look on his face forever. Also the look on the face of the chap in charge of stock when I handed him that stinky old piece of cloth. One time I was riffing at a prison and second week into it they had to duct tape the ladies windows because they were masturbating to us while we worked. Ikef was heartwarming to the inmates but when you're 23 that's a big confidence booster knowing ladies masturbate to you ha ha. The best I can come up with is that we used to give a lil of our commissary to any homeboy who didn't have food so they can eat. Other than that nothing really to sweet. The friendships are real though. People that tend to be exposed for what they are. So real is real. You get what you get. And you spend months if not years with some PPL. You come to love and enjoy their company.